Yo, what's good, y'all? Welcome back to Kid Taj. Today, we're going to be summarizing yesterday's NBA action. Four games on a Saturday. It was two game fours and two game threes. We have Raptors, Bucks, Wizards, Hawks, Spurs, Grizzlies, and Warriors, Trailblazers. I'm going to highlight all those games for a few minutes to so sit back and enjoy. We're going to start right off with the Raptors and Bucks. Game four, the Raptors trailing 2 1. And, um,. You know, this was a game where going in, it looked like the, the Bucks had the clear advantage here. And I think I did actually pick the Bucks to win this game because I was looking, you know, the Raptors lost to the Bucks twice and both the games were blowouts. And the game that the Raptors won, you know, they had to really fight for that one. And they barely won it. They had a huge Kyle Lowry shot at the end to clinch that victory. Whereas for the Bucks, you know, it's been a lot easier. The point differential has certainly been in the favor of the Milwaukee Bucks in this series. And that, you know, to me, makes it seem like the Bucks have the advantage. They have really outplayed the Raptors so far in this series. And, and, and look, the way that Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan have been playing so far, it didn't really provide any hope for me that they could really muster a road win based just on the way they played last game. They were totally momentumless in that BMO Bradley Center. But in this game, they really grinded it out. A very low scoring game. The Raptors took this one in the end, 87-76 via 33 points, nine boards, five assists, four steals from DeMar DeRozan. He was 12 for 22, a lot better than the 0 for 8 mark he posted in game three. And the Raptors defense was really good in terms of stopping Giannis again. Giannis only with 14 points and he was six for 19. Nine boards, four assists, two steals, two blocks, but he had seven turnovers and he was a minus 16. That was a team low. On the other hand, for the Raptors, the trio of Kyle Lowry, DeMar DeRozan, and Norman Powell were really good. And I should mention that the Raptors ended up starting Norman Powell instead of Jonas Valanciunas. Norman Powell got 34 minutes as a starter. He was plus 15, 12 points, four boards, four assists. Whereas Jonas Valanciunas off the bench, he was plus 11 in 22 minutes with 12 points and he was five of five from the field in that time really the only guy that could have had it going for milwaukee in this one was tony snell tony snell put up 19 points 7 of 12 and he had five threes in this one as well greg monroe off the bench providing a spark like he usually does but the the bucks really couldn't get constant scoring they weren't really able to rely on one single thing tony snell was basically the most consistent scorer on the team in this game he was the guy really putting Getting, keeping them in the game in this one. Um, and in the second half especially, the Bucks really just couldn't find any way to get buckets. And that would inevitably lead to a Raptors win. They tied this series at two apiece. What do I think this series is gonna happen in this series? Man, I could really see the Raptors taking this in seven. Um, just because you take a look at how they played at home, they played a little bit better. I, I mean, I just feel like they can get wins at home as as opposed to on the road. So I think I uh, I said Bucks in the six last time, but after the Bucks lose this home game, it's hard for me to. But but listen, it, it really has gone back and forth. The Bucks took game one, the Raptors took game two, Bucks took game three, Raptors took game four. I think Bucks are taking game five, and I'll say Bucks in seven. I'll say Bucks get a road win in game seven. Um, to win this whole thing. I think they can do it. I don't really believe in the, in, in the playoff Raptors. Now, the second game of the day was Wizards-Hawks, the Washington Wizards, taking it to Atlanta for games three and four after winning two on their home floor. Two games which weren't blowouts, but the Wizards just seemed to put it together more at the end than the Atlanta Hawks, and that led to two big wins. But in this game, back home, I did predict the Hawks would win this game just because I, I don't see the Hawks going down so easy. I did say in the beginning, I said I think the Wizards would win in seven. Wizards played really good in those first two games, but the Hawks with a huge win, a blowout win. They were up 20, 25 points in this game. They got 29 points, 14 boards out of Paul Millsap, who was phenomenal in 12 of 20 from the field. Dennis Schroeder with 27 points and nine assists was fantastic as well on 10 of 22. So those those two guys, you, know, you got to get big contributions out of them. They were fantastic. And Torian Prince, the rookie who's been starting for this Hawks team, 16 points. He was seven to 10 from the floor and he had two threes. This guy really gave them a spark and, and not really someone that you rely on to get you big points, but he was there. He was helping them 
on both ends in this one and they were up so much the entire game the only guy really on the Washington Wizards which, who was putting up a fight was John Wall who actually had a fantastic game in this one he went for 29.7 assists he was 10 of 12 yeah it only took 12 shots I think it would have served the Wizards a little bit better had he taken more shots but the defense just wasn't there enough in this game the Wizards giving up 116 points from Atlanta 38 in the first quarter and that really much that really set the tone I mean they were up 18 at the end of the first quarter and Atlanta scored 26 in each of the last three quarters they weren't slowing down and the Wizards couldn't slow them down so a big home win for the Hawks game four I believe I don't know what day it is but it's either gonna be on Tuesday not Tuesday Monday or Tuesday yeah Monday or Tuesday um and I look forward to it because I'm really not sure about this I I, I think I think I would say that I would pick the Hawks for game four as well. I think I'm picking the Hawks for four because when you think about it, the first two games in Washington, it's not like Washington got these real dominant statement wins. It's like they they just, they had more at the end of the game. The Hawks at home were unmatched in this game. And I feel like the Hawks can really compete with the Wizards. So in this series, I think I might go back to my original predictions of Wizards in seven. I think I'll do that. Um, that, and I think it's going to be a heck of a series because there's a huge rivalry. I mean, we got... Paul Millsap and Markeith Morris throwing shots at each other after the game. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very interested in this series now and, and curious to see where what turn it takes. I mean, if the Wizards take game four, I mean, this thing's over to me. Um, but if the Hawks take game four, it's, it's, it's a blank slate. Best of three series, who's going to step up first? Now, this game was the best game, not only of the evening, but this was the best game in the NBA playoffs so far. San Antonio Spurs in Memphis, game four. The Spurs leading 2-1. Spurs had two dominant victories to start this series. And then the Grizzlies came back. They really clawed and fought for that game three victory. And in that second half, they just took over. And, and it, was a, it was a convincing win. Now in game four, they get another game at home. And the Grizzlies, you know, they're, they're looking a little bit more dangerous at this point. And the Memphis Grizzlies, man... They grinded this one out. They got 35 points, 9 rebounds, 8 assists from Mike Conley. Marcus saw at 16, 12, and a big play down the stretch. But the one guy that I just I I I, I was so impressed with was Kawhi Leonard. And and I and it's not like it's like in my first time watching Kawhi Leonard. I, I know how good this guy is. I'm the one I'm the one who's always talking about he's the second best player in the NBA. And it's this type of stuff. That makes it that way. Now, you can come at me and be like, well, they lost the game. Well, look, if you can't give Kawhi Leonard high praise for his performance last night, you just didn't watch the game and you just don't care about the game because the, he was plus 18. Okay, he was plus 18 for the San Antonio Spurs and they lost. They lost this game in overtime. And the only reason they were in this game was Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard, I, he scored like their last 20 points or something like that. I, I don't know the exact stat on that, but Kawhi Leonard was the only guy putting in buckets for them down the stretch. You can see it here. I mean, he was hitting three after three. He was hitting any shot possible. He was on the defensive end, getting steals and buckets the other end. He posted 43 points in this one. And he, he got six steals, eight boards, three assists. He hit seven of 10 from beyond the arc. He couldn't miss. He looked like Kobe Bryant out there. That's what I was thinking. I th it looked like I was watching Kobe Bryant at the end of this game. And he was hitting these tough ass threes, okay? He was taking them one on five, and it didn't even matter, okay? He's the only option. And, and it's crazy because this Spurs team really struggled without him in this game. They couldn't get anything done. When he was in the game, they were rolling, but when he was off the floor, they were having a real hard time finding ways to put the ball in the basket. And the Grizzlies, they just willed their way to this win. Mike Conley had a huge shot at the end of the fourth quarter to send it to OT after Kawhi hit the go-ahead shot. And then, after Kawhi hits the game, tying three, and he hits back-to-back -back threes in the overtime, Marcus Gasol breaks the hearts of the Spurs with this crazy leaning shot. Marcus Gasol had been pretty off throughout the game. You know, I mean, he wasn't giving them that much. He was a minus seven. He was five of 12. He had seven turnovers, but this was the biggest shot of the night. And he hit it, and the Spurs unwisely used all of their timeouts, so they had to throw up this full court shot. Um, and that obviously wasn't going to go down, but this game was a game for the ages. I mean, it, it was incredible. It looked like the Spurs were down and out, and then Kawhi Leonard would come back and hit a bunch of threes and then it, it, it tie the game up and even take the lead. But then the Grizzlies would respond with it with a huge shot from either Mac 11 or Mark Gasol. So I thought that was fantastic. Um, I love Mike Conley and Kawhi Leonard. They're like two of my favorite players, and they went absolutely 
bonkers in this game. I mean, they killed it in this one, and it was such an entertaining show. And this win for the Grizzlies makes this series very interesting because a lot of people like me were sleeping on the Grizzlies' ability, you know, to, to get wins against big-time teams. I mean, I knew they did it, but I thought that, you know, the Spurs in the playoffs would come out focused. They'd come out, and they'd just be so dominant. And Kawhi Leonard's been dominant. He's, in, he's been incredible. But the rest of the team really hasn't stepped up enough. I know Tony Parker did have a really good game in this one, um, but they didn't get a good contribution out of Danny Green at all. LaMarcus Aldridge was quiet for a lot of this game. Um, and bench performances, Patty Mills didn't play very well. Mono Ginobili still hasn't made a single shot in the NBA playoffs. They're just not getting this, the, the, the contributions they need from these certain role players that they usually do. And that's a reason why the Grizzlies have been able to stay with them and eventually grind out these wins. I mean, Grizzlies have some really nice talent in Mike Conley and Mark Gasol, and you surround them with some quality players. Zach Randolph also has been having a good series. Jermichael Green woke up off the bench, um, and he's been playing off the bench because they put Randolph back in the starting lineup. This, the, the move to put James Ennis in the starting lineup instead of Wayne Seldon was really good as well um, for the Grizzlies. And yeah, like I said, it makes the series really interesting. What's going to happen next here? This is a best of three series now too. 2-2 two, two tie. I still have the Spurs, and I'm going to say Spurs. It's so hard to say Spurs in six because the Spurs couldn't get a home win. Maybe I got to say Spurs in seven. I think I will do that. Spurs in seven. Wow. The Grizzlies are really impressing me um, with their ability to, to hold tight with the San Antonio Spurs. I'm, I'm very surprised, and I really like to see that. Now, the last game of the evening was the Golden State Warriors in Portland for game three. Down 2-0 are the Blazers. They're playing their first home game. They get some real good news that their starting center, Yusuf Nurkic, would be returning for this game, a guy that they have missed so much throughout the first two games because they're getting dominated inside they they, they don't have a third option um but Yusuf Nurkic only played 17 minutes in this game coming off his injury wasn't moving very well um and it just didn't look like he was going to be able to have much of a scoring impact in fact he only had two points but he did have 11 rebounds in 17 minutes four assists he was passing the ball well and he was plus eight in 17 minutes just didn't get to play that much um and in this game, the Blazers took a lead for most of this, and it looked like, you know, because I believe they were up like 17 or something, um, but I, I wasn't getting ahead, because watching these games, I do want a certain team to win all these. I would love to see the Blazers win this game, because look, the Warriors beat them every time. I mean, I want to see competition in the first round with some of these really good teams. That's why I like the Spurs. Memphis Grizzlies is getting, it's, it's like we're getting a real good series out of that. And I know Memphis is a lot better than Portland. Um, but, you know, it's the same thing where I want to see the Pacers beat the Cavs and they just don't. And I just know the Pacers aren't winning the game. They're up 26. I know the game's not over because the other team has LeBron James. In this situation, the Portland Trailblazers, they were going crazy. They were so hot in this game. They were getting huge buckets out of Lillard and McCollum who combined for 63 in this one. And like I said, after game one, the only way the Blazers can win a game is if both Lillard and McCollum get super hot and and that's the only way they can have a chance if, if if only one of those guys get super hot no chance if none of them get hot forget it but if two of them get hot they have a shot at winning and both of them got hot again and they lost and this is just because of the fact that they they got hot for the first half and, and even the third quarter they were playing well um but at the end of the third quarter and in the fourth quarter portland started to go cold and you know with the warriors they always got this constant source of offense they can always get guys that you know, make a few shots. The Warriors can hit three threes in a row like nobody. I mean, they really can. You had Klay Thompson just light up in the third quarter and get them back in this game. And as soon as they did that, I knew it was over because when the Warriors overcome a lead, they're not about to lose it unless, you know, they're playing some top tier competition. The, 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 the Blazers aren't good enough to sustain something like that and to get to blow their lead and then win the game. I mean, you really need a good team to do that. I mean, the Blazers aren't capable of that. Um, and Steph Curry, he had a fantastic game, 34 points, 8 assists, 4 boards, 2 steals, 10 of 25 from the floor, plus 13. He really woke up in that second half because he wasn't playing that well in the first half, but he got his percentages up after making a ton of shots in the second half. No KD in this one as well. Um, and and, and I, I think it's kind of funny because I think the Blazers should be, they should be dis feel disrespected that, that KD, KD could play, he just isn't playing because he's not 100%. But since they're playing the Blazers, they're like, okay, we can get a win anyway. And the Blazers really played inspired in that first half, but it didn't last. I don't think this team just, they just don't have enough weapons. They're players. I mean, they got guys like Harkless. They got guys like um, Alvaruka Minu, Noah Vonley. Those guys really aren't that great um, 
aren't nearly as good as players in the Warriors, even without Kevin Durant. I want to talk about Draymond Green for this last part of the video. I mean, uh, just another fantastic performance from him. He had nine points, eight boards, seven assists, six blocks, two steals. The defensive work of Draymond Green, I mean, he's just a mastermind of that end. I mean, you really can't go up against him. And I tweeted this out during the game, or maybe it was after the game. I'm so frustrated seeing these, these forwards on the Portland Trailblazers, like a guy like Mo Harkless and, and Aminu, and I've seen these guys do this multiple times. You get Draymond on you and you decide to go one-on-one -on -one and just throw up this terrible shot that never goes in, doesn't even get close to going in. Guys never score on Draymond Green one-on-one, -on -one, especially if you're like that. People think they can just take advantage of Draymond Green because, I don't know, maybe they have a size advantage, but you're never going to win that matchup. They just never don't even get close. That's how good on defense this guy is. He, unless you're really good, you're not going to score on him. He, he just always knows how to make you miss or and badly or just block the shot which he did tons of times in this game he's just such a great rim protector you can't try to dunk on this guy you can't go one-on-one -on -one against this guy unless you're really elite like maybe dame lillard and cj mccollum could go one-on-one -on -one against this guy but i mean are we t if we're really talking mo harkless and, and even evan turner noah vonley and 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 alfred Aminu, it just doesn't work you just can't do it and people got to learn i mean it's not just them i've seen people other teams do this it doesn't work but I've seen it a lot, and Draymond Green's defense is still understated despite all the credit he's getting. I still think it's better than what people think. Um, just no one's like him in the NBA defending all five positions, rim protecting, stopping guys in the perimeter, changing shots, everything, and just being 6'7". On top of that is phenomenal um, for him. So yeah, all those teams got, got dubs that I was talking about. Um, and I'm going to do my predictions as well at the very end. I know this video is running a little long. We had four games yesterday. That's probably why. Um, so today... I watched most of the Pacers Cavs game. I think it's like a six point game where I'm at. Um, so I'm not going to talk about that just because, like, you know, it's it, it, most of the games already happened. So no point in predicting that. Um, the game after that, the Houston OKC game series is getting very interesting. Houston leading 2 1. I think Houston's taking a 3 1 lead. Um, after that, Bulls Celtics. TNT Bulls. We have to take this dub. I'm going to say Bulls. I'm pretty nervous, but I don't think they're going to drop two at home because the Celtics dropped two at home, and it would just be weird, and they're playing on TNT. So I got confidence in them to take a game four here. And our last game of the night, I believe, what is it? What is it? Oh, Clippers, Jazz. Mm, I'm going to say Jazz. Jazz evened it up at two apiece. That would just make the most sense to me. That's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, forget to leave a like, comment, who you think is going to win today. Um, was Kawhi Leonard's performance reminiscent of kobe bryant what do we think what are, do people agree with me on that um yeah that's gonna do it for this video subscribe if you're new i'm out thanks for watching y'all peace